you know, growing up in these modern times ain't easy. Things are getting you down. There's one thing you should keep in mind. And that's Something I miss is probably just being young, like being really little, like the sort of stuff where like your mum makes your breakfast and they like walk you to school and at school you do like nothing. At the same time change can be a good thing, definitely between when you're going from primary school to secondary school it's such a big chain and you get quite scared about it but in the end you are having like, more fun than you ever had before so it's, it's a good change, yeah. I kind of miss being like smaller than my mum. Like I miss feeling like a child. Like so, if you're upset or something, I like you want your mum to like comfort you, and you're like bigger than them. It just doesn't feel like right. I feel that most people our age love to learn but hate school because of the whole idea that letters kind of determine your life. <sighs> now I've seen the movies. 15 year olds do not do what I do. <laughs> what I expected when I was 8 years old. Now I've realised that it doesn't really matter what other people think and that used to matter to me so much. And now I don't really care. And I, I think it definitely, it's to do with the people I've surrounded myself with. I'm quite good at adjusting to change. Change is not always a good thing, but quite a big challenge sometimes. And I'm up to that challenge. I think it's really hard for you to be a teenage girl and not be like, dismissed. So many people are scared to like things that is known as a teenage girl thing to like. I would describe growing up as like, <gasps> it's like you're changing but you don't realise and you just take it for granted and you don't appreciate who you are then. Like I didn't appreciate myself when I was like younger and I didn't realise how little I had to worry about. I think I'm probably at my happiest sounds kind of cringy but probably when I'm dancing and like when I'm on a stage because it feels like you don't have to worry about anything else and you're just in that moment. I love my violin. Music is a very precious thing. It has the power to make people feel different ways. I'm one of those people that does have a lot of passions but like even though I love so many things I just prefer to just lie down. Literally gives me so much confidence to be in drama and I've never really had a problem with being an extrovert, but I think drama just absolutely helps you open up to so many more people. I miss my house in Portugal. We'd go out for a meal, we'd come back in, it'd be quite lame. Dad would watch Sky News, we'd all lie around on the sofas eating these disgusting biscuits, but they would just had so much chocolate on them that they were so good. And I miss going to the toilet. It's just the atmosphere, but I will never be able to get it again. I miss childhood in Malawi. Like, things were a lot different. I would probably say it's from my childhood. Yeah. Helped me be the person that I am today. My parents' input. Because, in a sense, it's not people's fault for some of their views because it's just a place they've been taught when they're growing up. Ignorance really aggravates I think ignorance is the, the, the main thing where, like, basically all of society's problems come from. I think living in Africa was a great experience. I think it definitely influenced my personality, my character, and the way I feel about other people. And I think it will definitely influence what I want to do in the future. Literally, I think Addison helped to make me the person I am because I had to like learn to stick up for myself and it made me a bit more feisty. Probably the influence my older brothers had on me and like they taught me how to stand up for myself and how to get on with life and keep all head up. Probably say like a box that I have and it has um, all my memories in it. I think it's probably like the best thing that I could say to save because it has lots of memories and I think that's the most important thing to hold on to. Funniest party memory was probably when our friend Haber, she wanted to be blood brothers until we told her that that's how people get AIDS and yet she still wanted to do it to like be like the ultimate friendship. Um, I really like just like sunrises and sunsets just make you feel like I'm passionate about the ocean. Love the idea that there are thousands of creatures that haven't been discovered. 
um, and I like all all its coolness. It's like I really like the feeling of like breeze, like if you go to the beach or something, um, just the feeling of the breeze against like, your face. It's so good. But my three favorite animals that are living in the sea at the moment: a jellyfish, a manta ray, and a great white shark. I think that my first crush is probably when I was in year one, maybe. His girlfriend was, she was like a tomboy, but that was so cool to be a tomboy when you were younger. I was so jealous of them. I just remember we were at like a soft play area. I just remember thinking, oh, I want to be Charlie's girlfriend. I think my first crush was like year three or something. And it was this boy. And then my best friend, Amina, she, she had a crush on his older brother. It was like in the year above. <laughs> We'd have like sleepovers. <laughs> we would just spend the whole time talking about them. That's embarrassing. My first crush was when I was four. We'd hide behind the bench at playtime and kiss. <laughs> and then one day he asked me to marry him, and I was like, no. And I just ran away. A few of my celebrity crushes are um, Kevin McCarthy and Zachary Robinson. And the whole of Swim Deep, Jake Bug, Matt Healy. There is a continuous theme with the musicians. I love Harry Potter. It's just I'm reading it again. I know it's known as a children's story, but it does teach you a lot of life lessons. Film made me cry. Summerine. You know the bit where her mum's in hospital and like he doesn't visit her. I'm like, what are you doing? No. The film that means a lot to me is the film P.S. I Love You and the first time I watched it was when I was in Ireland and I was like in that place and it's a really cute film because it's the story of like how to get over death you are still being happy. I love films more than I love music, like literally I hate music, it's loud and annoying. The first film that I watched, I've watched it like so many times, it's Sleeping Beauty. I don't know, just, just something resonated with me. Songs, the imagery, the story. <laughs> I just loved it. I'm very excited for all the other films that Meryl Streep's gonna bring out. I just love Meryl Streep. It's literally the most cliche thing I could ever say, but I absolutely adore Green Day. The Green Day were like the first alternative band I was introduced to when I was younger, like by my older brother, and I grew up around all of their songs. I think that lots of different people inspire me. Like, I think that you can find like admirable qualities, lots of people. Just, you are always putting yourself down and when you get asked the question of, kind of, what's your favourite thing about you, you just, you just start thinking, oh, what is there good about me? When there's loads of good things about you, but you just don't recognise them as yourself. Even though I may come across as quite a confident person, but deep down I'm really self-conscious and a lot of things get to me. You just think of yourself so negatively. Not accepting how I looked for a very long time did drag me down as a person. When I was younger, I think everyone goes through the stage. I just never really used to like how I look, but now I just love it. Now, <laughs> now I love myself. You've got to ignore the little things you don't like about people. And there are a lot of good things which outweigh the things you don't like. A lot of people open up to me very easily, and I like that about myself. I like that I give the impression of a person you can trust because I, had a lot of trust issues. I, I wish I had the ability to be more thoughtlessly selfless. That kind of make Like without having to put it into practice so much yourself. That'd be great. I think the thing that's changed is I don't care about what people think about me anymore. I know it might be just a situation, but this time last year, I was sort of like, I can't do this, I can't do that. People think like badly of me. I think it might just be like the fact that I'm going to year 11 next year. And it's just last year I probably went to see half of these people. And I'm just sort of like, you might as well just be who you want because who cares what they think? Past year, I have changed. Like I don't, I don't talk as much and I don't do as much because like year seven and eight me like did everything. Like I just say stuff and then I'm, now I'm like, oh god, no. So now I'm a bit more worried about what I'm going to think about myself in the future. I think I've become a bit more open. I've talked about like myself a lot more, uh, my feelings a lot more. I think I've realised who is like a genuine person in my life. I've gotten a much better image of what I'm going to do and where I'm going to be when I grow up. Before this year I had no idea what I wanted to do or where I'd be in say 10 years and now I've planned it all out and I know what I want to do and it feels really good. I've become a lot more mature. Um, 
to that from fakes. Something I got more confident over the last year. That was like something I was really struggling with, especially when I meet new people when I was younger. I mean, I still get scared when I meet new people. Hopefully, I don't come across as scared. Right now, I'm very happy. I was very unhappy last year. But right now, I'm in a very good place. When you're younger, like you listen to lots of different people's opinions, you hear lots of different things. And when you're younger, you tend to just copy other people. Whereas now, like you've managed to take everything that you've been told and then create who you are. I like change in small doses. At the same time, I think if you just stay the same, like it's just like, like what did you do with your life? I'm so excited for that future and like moving on with my life. Because right now, like I know this sounds really morbid, but like, are we living? In five years, <laughs> I would like, I'm not one of the people who's like looks ahead a lot, but just happy, you know. In the future, I really want to live in loads of countries because I really want to learn lots of languages. When I'm really old and retired, I'd love to live in like the south of France. Or, and like, I can just imagine myself being like a really old like pensioner, just sitting in like the vineyards. I see myself downtown LA, bitch. Sunset Boulevard, hit me up. <laughs> Film directing, screenplay right not writing because I can't write. I'll hire someone to write. <laughs> what you're doing, but on a much bigger motion picture scale. So I'm actually really excited to see how life turns out. Sounds really cliche, but I don't know what I want to do yet. I'm not scared about the future. Trust me, as bitch. It's like I have this idealistic version of what my future's gonna be, like move to New York and do journalism. So many career ideas that I really want to follow, but <sighs> but it's like obviously I'll, I'm gonna have to end up picking one. It doesn't scare me, but it puts me on edge. Probably the aspect of the future that scares me the most is never feeling like you've accomplished enough. It'd just be scared of like just not enjoying my life. <laughs> I'm scared of failing. I'm scared like by the time I die, I'm not gonna have achieved what I set out to achieve. Not having what I want to when I was this age. At 15, we all have such big dreams, and I just don't want to lose them. I'm very scared about the future uh, because I'll probably live with my mum and my dad till I'm like 45. What is it like being 15 in 2015? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm really privileged. I think my life's good and I'm happy. Because people's like knowledge grows. Like, when you're younger, you're not judgy about like people. Whereas like when you're 15, people like decide what they like and don't like and they sort of sometimes express it too much. <laughs> people get labelled in school. It's always like, who's the most popular, who's the least popular? Like, who's going to this party, who's not? And it's just sort of like, when you're older, people don't care about that kind of thing. I would say that being 15 in 2015, I think there's a lot of pressure on people that may not have necessarily been there before. Obviously, we're also lucky to live like in the year 2015, because like 50 years prior, we wouldn't have half the rights we did. Being 15 in 2015, it's good because you're growing up in a society that's starting to accept other people. We're not as narrow-minded as 15-year-olds were in 1960s. I like being 15 in 2015 because I always know how old I am. When I'm like an old woman. What year is it? 2019. Oh, I'm 90 years old. In three words, being 15 in 2015, I would say it is intense, there's lots of stress from society, it's um, a bit dull, very dull actually. Being a teenager in 2015 is not great if you're um, not so confident about who you are. For me, I've kind of become more confident so I'm able to do what I want, I'm in not in like a rude or like rebellious way, like be able to express myself. I think 15 is like a good age, I think that's like where you're prime, but you never really know, like I think every year you're going to be like, yeah this is a great age for me to be. There's a lot of stuff that you learn and you think, you think you're sort of grown up and you think you're mature and then every year that you realise that you weren't the year before. Thursday never looking back it's Friday